Our next speaker served for 10 years in the Idaho House of Representatives. She and her husband Jimmy are the owner-operators of the popular Kelp Pub and Grill in Idaho Falls and Idaho Transmission Warehouse. How do you get that combination? She was a Trump delegate for the 2016 and 2020 Republican National Convention. In 2018, she was elected as Idaho's first female lieutenant governor. Here with a report from Boise, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm North Idaho welcome to Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much to the K Kootenai County Republican Committee for a wonderfully successful evening. I'm very grateful to be here with you, and I'm looking forward to hearing what Danish has to say to us tonight. So I was asked to give a, pres a little discussion about what's happening at the Boise Capitol. So I'm going to be prefacing my remarks around what I view as being the good the bad and the ugly of what's happening in Boise. Oh, I also wanted to share with you this scarf I'm wearing tonight. It was a special gift to me from Nathan Toll when I was up here for the Kootenai County uh, Fair, and it was the last scarf that his mother knit. And I want, Nathan, I want you to know how much I appreciate the gift, and as long as I'm wearing this scarf, I will always remember your sweet mother. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about, I'm going to start off talking about the good things that are happening down at our Capitol. Good things on taxes. The lawmakers passed tax relief. They, there was an income tax rebate, income tax repeal, excuse me, income tax reduction. So that's a good thing. It's a good thing that we're getting some of our money back, that taking the top tax rate down to 6% is good. It makes the state of Idaho be more competitive with our surrounding states. Now it would be nice if we could actually eliminate the corporate income tax because that will further make our state more competitive, especially with the surrounding states. With a two billion dollar revenue surplus, there's still plenty of money left for additional tax relief in the form of the full repeal of the grocery tax. And with multiple candidates campaigning on repealing the grocery tax, there's good support and there's plenty of time left for that. As far as property tax, there's lots of opportunity in property tax reduction. What I'm going to talk to you about is the idea of returning the lands back to the state of Idaho. With 62% of our lands tied up, we need to reduce our dependency, get the federal mismanagement of our, of our natural resources, get rid of it, and put that land back into productivity. Whether it's increased grazing, agriculture, mining, how many of you realize that here in Idaho we have some of the most rich veins of rare earth minerals? Idaho can lead the nation in, if we were able to utilize our cobalt and the thorium that is in our lands. We can help America become energy independent. I'm seeing a bunch of cash up here. Is this for me? Thanks. <laughs> other, good, other great things that are happening in Idaho. School choice. There are bills that are being proposed to allow money to follow the student. There are... There's a number of bills relating to election integrity, including eliminating same-day registration, requiring photo ID, and and prohibiting ballot harvesting. There's a, there's a bill working its way through the legislature to strengthen Idaho's heartbeat, fetal heartbeat bill. And that's a good thing. I thank our lawmakers for working hard and diligently on these issues. The best thing that I've heard, and this is just a rumor, but the best thing I've heard is that the legislature will be adjourning just in time for us to celebrate St. Patty's Day. 
So I've talked to you a little bit about the good, now I'm going to talk to you about the bad. Our governor's budget proposal is a, an increase of 17% growth of the, of the budget. How many of your budgets have grown 17%? Why are we increasing the government's pocketbook when our people are suffering from inflation on food and gas like we've never seen before? We're also in a continued state of emergency almost two years now. The, this emergency order enforces Biden's executive orders on mandates and it gives away our state sovereignty. With shekels come shackles. Personally, I think it's way beyond time for us to be out of this emergency order. But I, I'm not the governor, <laughs> yet. <laughs> big, big Pharma is driving this mRNA mandate where thousands of Idahoans have lost their job and they continue to lose their jobs. They're even proposing a bill to have workmen's compensation cover the injuries. So this is real. People are being hurt by this shot mandate. And why? Why do we have to have a bill that covers injury on workmen's compensation where all small businesses have to pay the price of these corporate decisions enforced by the Biden mandate? Another bill that's considered bad is that there are some in the legislature that want to regulate cryptocurrency. And I say that Idaho should become a cryptocurrency haven. And now, lastly, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the ugly, the downright ugly. It has been reported that leadership does not want grocery tax repeal because this conflicts with those that want to grow government bigger. It is ugly that we must beg our elected leaders to get our hard-earned money back. Evidence continues to mount regarding discriminative and unconstitutional teachings in our universities and K-12 schools. Most recently, the revelation that the Office of the State Board of Education will be hosting a conference in June specifically calling out right-wing extremists. This conference is paid in part with a grant under the Biden administration, U.S. Department of Justice. One of the scheduled speakers at this conference is a Dr. Philip Saragossa. He's a complete radical leftist. I, I ask you to Google his name, Google what stochastic so, so, terrorism is, and you will find out what is happening in our state. Tent City has been arrest, erected in Boise, right next to our state capitol. This is ugly because liberal and former BLM activists are exploiting the homeless. They want you and I to pay for shelter with no rules. It's ugly because it is a blatant disrespect to law enforcement. They've been arrested for spitting and obscenities on our are Idaho State Police officers. And there is a complete lack of integrity in the law happening right next to the Capitol. Drugs, feces, urination on, and litter on state property. So I've shared with you some of the good, the bad, and the ugly happening at our Boise Capitol, but I don't want to leave you disheartened because I have some, I, I always like to offer solutions and offer hope. So I have a couple of ideas for how to deal with a couple of these ugly issues. In regards to Tent City, a citizen brought this idea to me. It can be corrected through administrative rule. This citizen also happens to be a member of the Idaho State Police. So to our governor, who I thought was going to be here tonight, 
and to our Attorney General, I invite you to come to my office and I will be happy to share this idea with you how we can, through administrative rule, clean up Tent City. Also, in regards to this conference this summer, let's say no to the grant. Let, and, and I will invite the lying Dr. Fauci to Boise State University and we'll lock him up. <laughs> so my hope remains with all of you, the conservative constitutional people like you who are getting involved, the Kootenai County Republicans, you are leading the example, leading the way for the rest of the state. Your successful implementation of your candidate vetting process, which is now spread to five northern counties. You, thank you. You are, after your efforts tonight, raising over $200,000 to support conservatives in the upcoming elections. And in the last November election, you successfully fielded 30 local elected positions, winning 18 of them. So thank you for your efforts. Because of the efforts, of conservative and constitutional people like you, we will continue to be a nation of and by the people. So thank you for your efforts. God bless you and may God bless America.